Hey guys, uh, this is uh, Pradeep from seleniumframework.com. In this video, we are going to see how we can execute um, <clears throat> a test automation uh, script against Sauce Labs. Um, if you're looking at this uh, video, um, most likely you are also looking at the page on seleniumframework.com. Uh, um, reading about Sauce Labs, reading about browser stack, reading, reading about cloud infrastructure for cross-browser test automation. Um, anyways, so here I have a very simple Cucumber uh, feature. The feature says Selenium Framework website. All we are doing is opening Selenium Framework website with a certain browser, and that browser is parameterized here. And you can see the number of combinations of browsers uh, and platforms uh, I have here. And whenever I open the Selenium Framework website uh, in the browser, I take a screenshot uh, so that I know um, if uh, the landing page is being rendered correctly or not. Um, you can see here the pattern here, the pattern here is Chrome 40 uh, OS X 10.9. So connecting to uh, Sauce Labs, uh, there are multiple ways for doing it. I'm using a gem called Sauce Labs gem here. So uh, if you go to your uh, gem file, for example, right? Uh, where's my gem file? Here. Um, I had this included gem sauce labs and once you in include the gem in the gem file in your env.rb right uh, you would also have in required the sauce labs here right uh, once you require it you will have to instantiate the module which is the sauce labs module so uh, I have that in uh, let's see it's not here Oh, I had it in the hooks.rb, right? Here I have included the Sauce Labs. So the module Sauce Labs is available. Um, anyways, the entire documentation of using the Sauce Labs gem is uh, already provided, uh, uh, you know, on my GitHub handle. Um, you can go here. It's also specified uh, on the website. So you can go here and then how to use Sauce Labs is all specified here. And what are all the possible values you would have to use, right? Platform and uh, browser and so on and so forth. So anyways, the focus of this discussion is uh, going into understanding how we execute a script um, against Sauce Labs. So coming back here, uh, open the Selenium Framework website and then take a screenshot. So the browser combinations I'm having are, you know, Chrome 40 all the way till Chrome 42. Um, and then combinations are, you know, some Chrome browsers on OS X uh, 10.9, OS X 10.8. I mentioned what 10.9 means here. OS X 10.9 is uh, otherwise code codenamed Mavericks, OS X Mavericks, and then 10.8 is codenamed Mountain Lion. Um, and then some against Windows 7, some against Windows XP, and then I have IE 8 against Windows 7, IE 11 against Windows 7, Firefox all the way from 25 to 37 on, you know, some on Windows 7 and some on Windows XP. Okay, um, so it's a very simple scenario. Just open the website, take the screenshot of the landing page. So let's look into the step definitions for this. If you look into the step definitions, well, I have some code here where uh, all I'm saying is, you know, where do I want to execute? I'm setting the environment variable um, uh, in uh, rem uh, as a remote. Um, setting the browser value, um, reading it from the environment variable. And uh, in this case, I'm reading the parameterized browser value and setting it in the environment variable browser. Okay, and then um, uh, if if the environment uh, variable browser is nil, I'm just going and setting it as uh, Chrome. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, if environment and environment variable is local, if if this by default environment of where is nil. Now in our case, um, none of these this line of code and this line of code will not get executed because obviously you know we have hard coded this to remote and then we are passing the browser value from here so um, so uh, the way the browser instance gets initialized you can see here it says sauce labs dot water browser uh, it takes um, the environment browser converted to a symbol okay and then it takes a bunch of options um, one of the options is the URL the URL of the um, 
uh, source labs. So in this case, I said HTTP colon slash slash. This is my username for source labs, and this is my access key for source labs. Okay, and then I had on demand dot source labs dot com at slash wd slash up. This is uh, the standard URL format for accessing uh, source labs. Okay, um, and then otherwise, you know, if if uh, 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 if environment is remote, you know, instantiated like this else instantiate. Anyways, uh, it's not going to enter this uh, else block. Okay, and after that, window maximize and then uh, open Selenium Framework website and then take the screenshot, right? So, uh, since I wanted to have the screenshot file name equal to the value of the browser, you know, I uh, replace the pipe with a comma. Um, no, sorry, uh, replace the pipe with an empty uh, and then uh, browser.screenshot.save and save it. Um, you can already see that, you know, I have uh, already executed this and then I have got a bunch of uh, uh, images here um, so I'm going to re-execute it uh, because I'm right now recording the video and then I did not record it before okay so let's go back here and let's first take a look at the sauce labs uh, dashboard right so um, you know the sauce labs dashboard when you log in uh, you are on this uh, uh, home page the landing page dashboard whatever you call it um, the manual session right we called it interactive session so if you click interactive session and let's say you know you enter the URL of uh, the page then uh, specify the resolution and then you know once you select uh, a certain let's say Windows 7 and then you know IE Internet, uh, Internet Explorer 11 and then you can select a lot of uh, uh, resolutions here. I'll, I'll leave the default and then if I click hit, uh, sorry, test, you can see that a new fresh instance is being provisioned uh, for this session and um, um, this should this should be pretty fast. Um, you can see that the machine has been provisioned. My seleniumframework.com website is entered in the URL and then uh, I have it. I can interact through the browser with the machine right see I'm hovering on it I can click on it you know for example I click on about right um, the click happens through the browser I'm interacting with the machine through the browser right so you can see I can scroll down um, I can do any any bunch of operations right a um, couple of uh, uh, actions which which are possible here so you can see there is a bug you can create a bug here you can take a screenshot you can do a live share of this session um, since this is in the session is active you can see that the play button is already pressed if you click this button the stop you know the session is stopped um, and then uh, let's see what else all right this is copying text to remote clipboard uh, this is copied from remote clipboard right um, so uh, you know, this is the user account so that's that's pretty much. I mean, you can you can see that you can interact with it. So this is an interactive manual manual way of doing it, right? Um, so if I let's let's me go ahead and stop this. Obviously, you know, interactive session is great for some quick checking uh, whenever you would want to do. But the real power of this uh, cloud infrastructure uh, comes when we can execute our tests on this infrastructure um, in a remote fashion and more in an automated fashion, right? So uh, you can say that it says manual session whenever you have used it. Let me go ahead and kick off the script and let's come back and see what's happening here, right? So let's go ahead, right click this. Uh, you know what, I'd like to execute it from, yeah, let me go ahead and execute this. I thought I'll execute it from the command line, right? Um, but let me go ahead and execute this right now. So, uh, all right. Okay, you can see that the execution started. Let's go to the Sauce Labs dashboard. You can see that automatically a session is created for us and it says it's running. And you can see that it is OS X 10.9, okay, and Chrome 40. And now you can see another, this completed, the session got completed so quickly. Then now it's OS X 10.9.41. You can see that it's executing one after the other, one after the other, right? And while it's executing, we can actually go ahead and take a look at, you know, view the full screen for this. 
Okay. Um, now, right, there you go. See, it has launched and it is um, racing through. Uh, oh, it completed. And now if we go back to the dashboard, right? Okay, it's executing now 10840. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a finished session. Let's take, uh, for example, this one, OS X 10.9 and 42. You can go into this session and a uh, couple of things what you can see here, right? First thing is the commands. What commands were sent from our machine to the sauce labs? So you can see that it's nothing but a get and post sessions, which is nothing but the web driver protocol, right? Um, Selenium follows the web driver protocol, so it just keeps sending get and post. You can see each command, you can go ahead and take a look at it, and you can see, you know, this post URL was done on seleniumframework.com, okay? So on and so forth. Um, you can see the screenshot, screencast, uh, the entire video of execution. So let's say I go ahead and click this. So in the browser inline, right? You can see that, uh, uh, you know, it shows you the replay of whatever happened on that machine. Um, so in this case, it is uh, OS X 10, 10 9. okay? You can see that. Uh, it has opened the website, right? Um, then you can click the Selenium log. You can see the actual Selenium log, complete Selenium log of what happened. So, um, you know, you can see the stack trace and, and you know, exactly down to uh, whatever Selenium logs uh, for the back and forth calls. Um, and finally, metadata, right? If you go ahead and look at the metadata, this metadata is for this session, right? So it talks about the browser, creation time, custom data, and so on and so forth. Um, you can see that the record screenshots is true and record video is true. By default, those values are set. So what does that mean is, the bottom you'll find this downloads. Uh, you can download the Selenium log or you can download the source log. Um, you can also see the media, that is video. You can download the video. For example, if you click video, right? You can see that I can download this entire video. I'm not going to download it, but um, just for uh, demonstration purposes, you can see the screenshots taken at different uh, points. Okay, so you can see how powerful this is. Um, let me go back and see, you know, what's the status of uh, the execution? Okay, so the execution is going on, you know, it's now in Windows 7 and IE 8. So if you go back here, um, you can see where is Windows 7 and IE 8 here. Windows 7 and IE 8. So it's looping through that and executing. As it is executing, right, you can see that these images are being created here, right? You can see each of these uh, images. Let's say, for example, IE 8 and Windows 7. Uh, IE 8 and Windows 7. Let's say I double click this, right? You can see that the screenshot which, uh, uh, which was taken on the Sauce Labs machine, right, um, is saved here. Right, um, so so this is a very very simple example of using the Sauce Labs gem, right, um, and uh, specifying the browser and platform version and executing it against Sauce Labs. Of course, there are many many more ways. If you go to saucelabs.com website, uh, based on what framework you chose, um, there are there are there are frankly many ways to do this. Uh, this is only one example of how to go about this. Okay. Um, all right, so that's that's a quick uh, demo of how Sauce Labs works and how powerful it can be to do cross-browser test automation. Um, obviously, Sauce Labs can even do mobile test automation using Appium, um, but uh, that's for uh, a different session uh, for now. Thanks for watching this video.